Okay, I'm going to make a short video. These are the sketch pads I'm making. So the first one I figure what I'll do is I'll show you how to do a buffalo. But so when we open this up, it's got it's kind of, you know, you can see it's a pan or a fan uh, type of pad. And I've already got my image traced down, but I not only traced it down once, but I took carbon paper, put it underneath here, so I got a second version, and put carbon paper, got a third version. So that way, if I if it mucks up, I always have a second version. So what I'm going to do, is, since I know this is correct, I'm going to go ahead and pull off my transfer, or something there to that effect. And that actually will go over here, because I'm actually left-handed. Okay, it shows it backwards, so just kind of like, yeah. Okay. So the other thing I'm going to do is I want to choose an area where I can do a value, a value scale. And that's based upon these right here. Okay. So value scale is basically 10 blocks, 10 values. And I'm going to use a drawing pencil of sorts. So hang on a second here. i got to go grab one. i got pins, everything else. But what I need. Oh, so hold on. So the first step to anything is making sure that you understand this part here, your values. So I'm going to go across the top of this. Remember, this is this is actually uh, workup, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to kind of use my graphic ruler. And since I know I want 10 inches, my graphic rulers are split into inches. And also, uh, let me see here, get there that go to 10 it's a really kind of a cool unit and then of course I'm going to break it up into 10 individual boxes equal squares hopefully you can see that okay this is two inches wide exactly so the curve clear graphic rulers. You can get them at um, any of your art stores, office stores, any place you can get them. And look at that. What's interesting, if you look at here, and I go here, even though this was measured exactly, you can see to go that extra 10, it steps outside the line. So I'm just going to go ahead and create that. Take it up there. So I'm going to also want to do something which I haven't done in a long time is just see exactly. Yeah, see? It's a sixteenth longer. But I used I used this, so it's okay. So hopefully you can't really see that. So I'm going to move in closer here. There we go. Now you can see it. Now, how does this work? So if we take our image like this, and we put this over top, when this starts blending in, it means it's close to the right value. So if I come here, you can kind of see how dark it is, hopefully. If I go here, you can kind of see here, obviously, it's white and black. And it starts getting there, but I can move through here, and when the value starts blending, so right about here, I can. it's right between these two right here. This is too light, this is too dark, and this is way too dark. So that's how we use these, and you can move it around. Now, why is it so important to be able to do that? Well, one, doing it, hang on a second here, sorry about that, uh, allows me to make sure that whatever I'm doing is correct. Now, the value in that is you know it's correct. So when you start drawing these things on your own, you wind up uh, um, making sure everything's correct, but then you step away from that because you're going to do things yourself. Okay, hold on a second. Now also, just so you know, this is a unique pencil because it's actually solid lead and then a pencil holder. I use these in class because I think it makes the kids feel like they're more artistic. Also, they're more professional. Also, it's... Uh, better way to hold a lead because they get kind of heavy-handed and they break the lead so it's easier this way 
But I want you to notice something. I'm going to put my pencil like that, so about that much out. And, I'm, and if you notice, it's a really sharp point, as sharp as I possibly can get it with an electric sharp pencil sharpener. Okay. <laughs> so when I first started teaching this, I was going from dark to light. The problem is all the students were going from dark to light, and then they would start to work from dark to light. So what I am doing now with this is, hold on, take, maybe, hold on, hold on, hold on, oh there it is, hang on, so I'll give you reference to how this thing kind of fits, I'm just going to take the value scale this value finder above here. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to put it right here so we see it. Well, I can actually set it, but I think that's going to be fine. In fact, I'll just do it that way. Now, what I'm going to do here is we have a little, this piece kind of coming off, so I'm going to make sure this thing is not moving. Okay. I'm still working on these, so please forgive me. Okay. So instead of going from dark to light, which typically we'll want to do, or from dark to light, I want to go from light to dark. Okay. So if I'm looking at this right here, my first value values, 1 or 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. First five values, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So it's got to be completely dark there. So what I'm going to do... I obviously know this one's going to have a slight value to it. So I'm going to come in here and I want to work really light, almost to the point where you can't see it. So I'm going to come into an area where it's flat enough. And that's another reason why you sharpen your pencil because you can get these pencils super sharp. Now notice I'm going to do all this value, pull it all the way down because they progressively get darker. So if I do this right here and leave that one, I've got this one done. So now I'm going to come in here. I can actually do this. Look here. It kind of blends in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go to the third one. It's got to get a little darker. And I'm going to take that value all the way down. So this might be a 10 minute video or something like that. And I want to keep it consistent across the whole thing. Okay, so we got one, a nine, 10, nine, eight. Now, of course, I'm going to take seven down. I want to take it a little bit lower, a little darker. I'm going to do this. But I'm going to do that same value to all of them. This is a fast way of doing this. It's also a fast way of teaching the kids on how to do this without really mucking it all up. So we go to six. Let me see. There's six right here. Now six and five, this could go a little darker. So not a lot of change there. Okay. I don't know what that is when I'm getting that mark there. Okay. So we go to six. And now you can kind of see the progressional change between the five the five values or say or, yeah five values. Now I'm going to come in here to five, and you can see obviously that needs to go darker. I'm going to take this here, and it's bare, and notice how I'm using my pencil too. I'm not like this. I'm actually like this. It's a little bit easier because you're using the side of the pencil. Also, I'm working up. I'm not working flat. So there we go, five. Four needs go, so there we go. Now, the opposite of the game is once I get these done, I'll go back over them again and make sure. And then we'll go to three right here. That's got to go darker. And then we go two. I'm just going to take that value there. So this is an easy way to make sure that your values are correct. Also, that you go from light to dark because you want the kids to go from light to dark because they will go dark and you'll never get them back. <laughs> don't ask. I don't know why. 
And now I can go in here and say, okay, my values, if I look here, even though I did that visually, I take my darkest value here and say, okay, how dark is that? Okay, that's pretty good. I go here, this one needs to go dark. So you can see I'm going back and adjusting them. Now, this may not make a lot of sense, but over the scope of this, you want to make sure that you're kind of seeing these things. And you can kind of see there's four, five. I'm going to take that down a little bit. Take this down a little bit. Okay, so everything kind of blends in a little bit. I go to six. It go dark a little bit. And I'm just using a light pressure on that. There's my six. I'll go to seven. It could go just a slight touch. Eight. Nine. And then ten. So you can kind of see how this went. And you go backwards. Now, the reason why, like I said, the reason why I did that is because when the kids were starting, they were starting with this value here. They were starting all the dark spots. Uh, let me move you this way okay there we go hopefully I can get that all in there they were starting on all the dark spots and working and then having this almost graphic when we're trying to create something realistic so I'm gonna do that first value so you can kinda of see it which will be number nine and I'm gonna work really really light even over the dark areas and every time I my pencils here my eyes are here always if your eyes are here then you got a more accurate drawing it looks good and every time I move every time I move my pencil I want my head to be exactly in that same place this is a learned trait so just so you know and of course what are you noticing it's that value so light you almost can't see it okay so I'm coming here and if I do here now some of these values believe it or not I won't have to go back so that's the reason why I go from light to dark it seems that if I go from dark to light I'm always having to go backwards a little bit so I'm gonna come here put that same value in put the same value in here I'm gonna come here I'm just gonna make sure I got that in there and you can also add these things in here like this except you can do that at the end and it actually gives you a much more solid image so I'm gonna come here and I don't want to create any lines so that's another reason why I'm using the side of the pencil I'm also you can see it's still very sharp I'm not using a lot of pressure again wherever my wherever my pencils at where my pencils at my eyes are at it just makes a much more solid drawing and unfortunately you can't I don't know if you can see my head or not but you know come here now the nice thing that you got some values up here, some light parts, dark parts, it, it's part of that. You can put these in and you know they don't have to be exact, but you know it's easier to put them in later after you got this all done. So I'm gonna come back in here. I'll just drop these in here a little bit. But this is step one on doing this. And all this stuff right here, you kind of come in. I'm just going to, I'm looking back and forth at my image and if I think I got it I just put the pencil down and call it and notice another thing we're not I do not use an eraser the reason why I don't use an eraser because it hides too many mistakes we learn from those mistakes rather than keep doing them so on this one here and actually I'm using cheater so I can actually see okay so on here this gives me the idea that when I'm looking uh, I can stop, I can step back, I can reflect a little bit. It actually goes pretty fast. These are actually 30 minute sketches only. They are not um, they are not two hours, three hours, whatever. It's just a 30 minute sketch. So if you put a time limit on the kids, put a time limit of 30 minutes. Um, they do their value scale, maybe 10 minutes. Uh, they're going to be really slow when they first start, and that's actually okay because when they first start, it's like, you know, trying to... Uh, understand what it is so they're going to go slow then they're going to go faster okay so that's kind of the premise behind this this is actually the first real step to teaching people on how to use a pencil 
be familiar with it, and get into some sort of color without sitting there trying to draw everything out. Um, transferring has been doing down since, I don't know, forever. So you're not really cheating. And when you're first learning how to do this, yeah, use known imagery, use known subject, use known photographs. Photographs, not animation. Photographs from real life, because then they can apply that later to what they want to do, much rather than the other way around. So anyway, this is uh, Mr. Bowers with Hedgehog Academy here at SLA today. Uh, you guys have a good one, and the next video will be on step two. So this is this was actually creating that value and doing the first value is step one. Okay, Mr. Bowers out.